All right, take you back to that story. What support is needed for the school in Tsakane that has seen repeated incidents uh, of suicide and attempted suicide? We've got back with us Dr. Shahida Omar, Clinical Director at the Teddy Bear Foundation. Uh, apologies that Dr. Shahida seems to have lost you in that connection, but you were pointing out the collapse of uh, coping mechanisms. Uh, so if, if we are saying they've collapsed, and we, we tend to say, and have that conversation, so to speak, whenever uh, uh, the, the children are unable or learners are unable to cope with the, with the pressure and, and revert to, to suicide. But I, I, is there a different way in which uh, learners need to be equipped to cope with pressure because of the different types of pressures that uh, I suppose they are dealing with today? Well, indeed, I think if we look at what our learners are faced with, they need... Uh, skills. They need to be given the opportunity where they learn to problem solve because I think often the challenge is when children are faced with multiple stresses, life happens to every child, every family. And if we just look and reflect on COVID-19, the challenges faced with that, uh, and then we look at the impact of load shedding, uh, the impact of poverty, unemployment, and how it affects children, learners, and not knowing what to do, how to do, or where to reach out. I think these are the concerns and often the pressure, peer pressure. We look at the advent of technology and how children and learners are bombarded with so much violence, so much, uh, uh, so many challenges that and they're not able to find themselves in a position to process everything that they faced with. They're not able to integrate and reach out. So it's about enabling them, empowering them where to reach out for that support, how to reach out, and of course also having a platform where they can get that immediate support because waiting for reaching out or waiting for somebody to come to one's aid or to a rescue could actually be a, a, you know, a huge uh, challenge for that learner because that time delay could actually result in a, a drastic situation, a devastation, a loss of a life. And this is where we are, I think, failing and falling short. Yes, prevention is key. It's critical. So teaching children on, on coping skills, teaching them basic practical skills, breathing exercises, who to reach out to, but having those resources available for the learners is key. Uh, you know, we're finding that learners would reach out to other learners, but again, that's not sufficient because one yeah. doesn't expect a learner to actually re, you know, provide that critical support in a crisis when it's a life and death situation. Yeah. So the psychological services and the mental health services that, uh, you know, are available are not sufficient. We realize that there's a, you know, there's uh, the ratio of learners to actual uh, psychologists or social workers based at the school are not adequate. The, uh, it's, it's very disproportionate and skewed. So it's unrealistic to actually reach out to a learner in a crisis. Uh, a lot more work needs to be done where parents are also equipped with skills to look out for the telltale signs that their child is not coping, the child is a victim of bully, the child is uh, suffering from anxiety, there's depression, there's sudden mood swings, changes in eating habits, uh, you know, uh, sleeping habits yeah. and, and performance. So, again, we, we need to educate, empower our edu uh, parents, educators, and even the school support team because they may pick up something that may be overlooked by other people within right. the school institution. So I think, you know, on different levels, a lot of training needs to be done. A lot of work still needs to be done. And, of course, looking at running workshops with learners regularly, consistently on how they could actually cope with challenging situations so that they feel more equipped, more in control. Because what we're seeing is people, learners are losing a sense of power and control, losing a sense of confidence and hope. And we need to instill hope and we need to ensure that they are resilient in bouncing back. So, I mean, there, there are two levels there that you're speaking of. You're speaking of the immediate interface at the school level, and many have been calling for the return of, of social workers, for example, who have an, an active office in, 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 in our schools where learners can immediately get access uh, to the kind of, of, of help that they need. But, for example, if we look at this particular story, the, 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 the grade 8 uh, pupil parents are saying that they, they didn't even know that their daughter had collapsed 
uh, at school. They won't get to told later that there, there's, there's some kind of incident that could have happened. This, I suppose, also speaks to one, the other issue that you're raising, a, a, a stronger interface between the school and the home so that they could possibly know what kind of the challenges uh, the child could be facing from where she comes from and know when to intervene and when to alert parents uh, a little bit earlier. Indeed, Abu, I think this is not the first incident where parents have not been contacted timelessly. You know, the lack of timeless response, appropriate and adequate responses could be a game changer, a life changer. And I think the protocols are there. On paper, theoretically, we've got it in place. But the implementation, the practical reach out is not following through. And I think this is something that needs to be enforced and there needs to be consequent management for failure of reporting or reaching out to the legal guardians, the primary caregivers. We've seen many cases that have actually fallen through the cracks because of lack of uh, appropriate and timeless responses. Yeah, Dr. Shahid Elma, appreciate your time. Thanks uh, for coming on this afternoon. Clinical Director at the Teddy Bear Foundation.